Here at T-Rex Arms, we love night vision, but there's a question we've been asking ourselves. When will digital night vision be worth anything? We live in the digital age. Pretty much all analog technology from the past has been replaced. Radios, televisions, cameras, computers, phones, everything that used to be analog is now digital, and the digital tools vastly outperform their old analog counterparts. With one exception, night vision. All light amplification type night vision uses an analog image intensifier tube, and it's very old tech. Photocathode tubes, which detect light and convert it into electrical impulses, have been around since the 1930s. Primitive night vision scopes were fielded by the Americans, Germans, and Russians during World War II, and photocathodes were used for way more than night vision. They're how every video camera ever worked at the very beginning of the early days of television. I remember shooting on Betacam cameras that used photocathode tubes when I was a kid and having to deal with all kinds of analog tube limitations. So it was really nice when analog tubes were replaced by digital silicon chips in the 90s. And just a few years later, those chips had so improved in quality that they replaced film in cinema cameras for big blockbuster Hollywood movies. Over the last 20 years, digital imaging sensors have gotten so much better that it's almost impossible to describe the improvements. This clunky old $150 cell phone has two video cameras in it that are vastly better than the $30,000 Betacam camera I was using in 95. And the only thing more mind-boggling than how fast digital centers have improved is how our highest tech, most cutting edge, tip of the spear military guys are still using analog tubes. Nobody's been using photocathode tubes for any imaging application for two decades except this very specific field of military night vision. And that's just how good these analog tubes are at this one specific use case that they've been developed for. Now it's only a matter of time before the digital sensors catch up, but I want to compare two top of the line devices to see how good digital night vision is now. On the surface level, both of these things work the same way. Darkness comes in and lightness comes out, but the way in which this happens is very different. It's kind of like comparing an electric motor and a gasoline engine. They kind of do the same things, but in completely different ways and with completely different mechanisms. By the way, this is a PVS-14 built on an L3 Gen 3 unfilmed white phosphor image intensifier tube. And these modern tubes are made out of way more exotic stuff and way more sensitive, but fundamentally, this is exactly the same tech that the Marines took to Okinawa in 1945. Here's how it works. When a photon hits the surface of the photocathode, it is transformed into an electron and comes out the other side. When that electron hits one of the phosphors on the back of the screen, it causes that phosphor to glow, emitting photons. In the 1940s, the Gen Zero night vision amplified visible light a little bit, but more importantly, it turned invisible infrared light into electrons, and those electrons into visible light. Gen Zero night vision scopes used in World War II were only usable with powerful infrared searchlights. They were essentially invisible flashlights for finding targets. The Gen 1 night vision optics used in Vietnam had greatly improved sensitivity, but they still needed infrared illumination or a full moon to really work. Then in the late 70s, we got Gen 2 night vision, which added a microchannel plate to multiply the number of electrons that were being sent to the screen. And this could be used in very dark environments without extra infrared illumination. Gen 3 night vision came along in the 80s using a much more effective gallium arsenide photocathode. And since Gen 3, there have been several improvements to the sensitivity and efficiency of every component. Photocathodes are now detecting far more photons and turning them into electrons far more efficiently. Even the phosphor screens have improved to the point where every electron is turning into far more photons. However, since the 80s, most of the improvements that scientists have been adding to these have had slightly diminishing returns. We may have squeezed all the performance out of these tubes by now, and as photocathodes are approaching their 100th birthday, it's time for digital sensors to catch up. Digital night vision works a little differently. Instead of a photocathode tube, a silicone CCD or CMOS chip detects photons and every 30th of a second takes a picture, which is sent to a digital analog converter that turns it into ones and zeros that go to a digital signal processor where the image is adjusted. And then those ones and zeros go to another converter, which moves on to a LCD screen that emits photons into your eye. It's just a digital camera, that's all. 
and a bunch of digital cameras claim to have night vision capability, especially security cameras, but they're not especially sensitive. They can just see infrared light, and they generally have a lot of infrared LEDs all around the lens. And cheap digital monoculars also need powerful IR illumination to work at all just like Gen Zero night vision tubes in World War II because most of these devices are using cheap, nasty digital sensors that are somewhere in between Gen Zero and Gen One night vision in sensitivity. Now, I'm not even gonna compare this thing to a Gen Three tube. To give digital a fighting chance, we'll need to go with a professional digital video camera that's been built with low light performance in mind, like the Sony A7S Mark II. Sure, its sensor is a few years old, but it's still the most sensitive thing that you can get for less than about $20,000. You could do slightly better than this white phosphor PVS-14 for more than $20,000, but it's still a pretty good comparison, especially if we modify the camera. All pro cameras have a filter that blocks infrared light because if you don't, the image looks extremely weird. If you're going for beautiful cinematic looks, you don't want to see infrared light, but if you want maximum light sensitivity, you want the whole spectrum. So, we tore the infrared filter right out. Under a full moon with some IR lasers and illuminators going, the modified A7S II shoots amazing video. Lots of resolution, vibrant colors, it's big, it's sharp, it looks very advanced and futuristic, but we wanted to know how it would compare with real night vision in a real dark environment. So I've got a 50 millimeter f1.8 lens on here, which is a pretty good match for the lens on the PVS-14. And to record the image from the tube, I'm using a Sony RX100. Its lens size is just about perfect for the eye relief. It's got all the manual controls. It shoots in 4K. Since it's also a Sony, it's got all the same video modes as this one. So I think this is the closest we can get to an apples to apples comparison between two really different imaging technologies. And in a direct comparison, in really, really low light, like a very dark building or way back in the Tennessee forest, the Gen 3 tube is just totally beating the digital sensor. The PVS-14 is way more sensitive. There's no question about that. However, if we step out of the woods where there's a little more moonlight and a tiny bit of distant house light, the A7S catches up. The signal to noise ratio is still better on the tube, but since the camera is recording in 4K, it's actually seeing some more detail. Based on these really basic charts, it looks like the PVS-14's phosphor screen is around 1000 by 1000 pixels or one megapixel squared even though it's not square, and I know that analog tube resolution is not measured in pixels. The A7S is recording a frame size of 3840 by 2160, so that's more than eight megapixels. But the detail that it can actually resolve is heavily dependent on how much light there is. And remember that the A7S has another trick. It sees in color. There's not really enough light to see specific colors in the dark darkness, but large objects, LEDs, screens, vehicle lights, all of those things show up as identifiable colors. And if we build a custom color balance, we can see the difference between visible light and IR light. This is something that the analog tube cannot do. And knowing which lights are visible and which lights are infrared is very handy. So after all these tests and comparisons and counting pixels and analyzing histograms, what you can see is really all that matters. The PVS-14's tube is vastly more sensitive in extreme low light than the A7S sensor. But if there's even a quarter of a moon out, they're pretty neck and neck. The camera gets most of its sensitivity by having a way larger sensor, so technically it's less sensitive per square inch, but it's also offering eight times the resolution and the ability to see in color. And for certain things and certain scenarios, the A7S image just gives me more information and lets me see more than the Gen 3 tube. Now obviously, I'm not recommending that soldiers replace their PVS-31s with A7S's. This camera is way bigger, way heavier, and it uses roughly 100 times more battery power. But digital night vision offers some serious hardware advantages. The camera body may not be waterproof, but the sensor does not have a limited lifespan. You can't burn it out by exposing it to too much light. It's got image stabilization, autofocus, widescreen, image overlays, you can record video, stream it to spotters, swap out lenses. So clearly digital night vision is the future. It's just not here quite yet. But Sony should announce the A7S Mark III later this year, and it may have a much more sensitive sensor for us to test. 
And more importantly, all the parts of a future digital night vision goggle system are being developed in the private sector. Sensors, lenses, image processing, virtual reality displays, all these things are being developed at a rapid pace for a whole bunch of different markets and being mass produced today. So it's only a matter of time before somebody starts combining these components into a useful tactical tool. And that's what our next video is going to be about when we talk about sort of the future of digital night vision and some of the advantages that it will offer. And if you're interested in more videos about that kind of technology, the long boring ones without the shooting, make sure you subscribe to this channel because there are going to be a few more of those. To you, this may seem ugly. To me, it's beautiful.